Assalamu alaikum and good evening to all of you. It's Ali Khan Wajid, Learn with Gemini. Today it's all about the most important grammatical term and that is run on sentences. Dear, in this video lecture, I would better share its two succinct definitions and types with examples. There would remain not a slight confusion if you listen it attentively. Dear guys, dear fellows, dear onlookers, now let's get started it. What is a run-on sentence? To talk of knowledge at length, a run-on sentence is constructed of two or more independent clauses. Dear fellows, in the red lines, the main concept over there is that there should be two or more independent clauses. Independent clauses in the next slide would also get to know all about the independent clause and dependent clause as well that are not joined correctly. It should be constructed into separate sentences. A run-on sentence is described by its grammatical structure, not its length. It is meant to be that a sentence should be constructed on its grammatical structure, not on the basis of its length. Dear guys, dear fellows, dear onlookers, there is one more succinct definition of run-on sentences for your better understanding when two independent clauses run together without proper punctuation or appropriate conjunctions it is called run-on sentence it is meant to be that we need not to, uh, to put a punctuation or conjunction to complete a run-on sentence Dear fellows, dear guys, now it is about a clause. What is a clause? Here below are the two definitions and what they include is also on this particular slide. It is a group of words that contains a subject and a verb that have a connection. Here it is meant to be that in a clause you would have a subject and a verb as well and it must have a connection with that subject. And the second definition is over your slide, dear fellows, is that a clause is the main unit of grammatical structure. It usually consists of a subject and a predicate. It consists of one or more groups. A traditional structure of a clause is, it stands for SPCA, it is the acronym of subject, predicate, complement, and adjunct. Dear guys, dear fellows, that in a clause you would have a subject and a predicate. What is meant by a subject and predicate? In the coming slides, all these particular, the words that have been highlighted in white ink will also be elaborated. Dear guys, dear fellows, Dear guys, dear fellows, in the previous slide there was the definition of the old class and here there are some examples of that particular word and also something about what it predicate having with its examples as well. So first of all, there are two examples of a clause. He laughed at stupid persons. This is here you would find he working as a subject and laughed as a verb and it is a regular form of verb. And the second one is, I was there when he arrived. Then it is meant to be, I was there, it is a clause. And the next one, the word in the previous slide was predicate. Here is, first of all, its definition, what is a predicate? And there is an example as well. A predicate is the part of a sentence that tells what the subject is doing. It is meant to be that activity 
डन बाय द सब्जेक्ट इट शोज बाय द प्रेडिकेट और व्हाट द सब्जेक्ट इज हेयर बिलो इज द एग्जांपल एज वेल जॉर्ज वाज प्लेइंग बैडमिंटन हेयर जॉर्ज इज द सब्जेक्ट वेयर एज द रेस्ट ऑफ द वर्ड्स आर कॉल्ड योर प्रेडिकेट एंड द वर्ड्स आर वाज प्लेइंग बैडमिंटन was playing is the sentence of your past continuous sentence where was is working as a helping verb and then your play having the addition of ing is connected are the definition of the particular tense past continuous tense dear guys dear fellows in the previous slide there was a word adjunct and what is the definition and then here below with having the same case examples are also over there on this particular slide a word or phrase that constitute an optional element or is considered of secondary importance in a sentence it is meant to be when there is a sentence and activity that is being done by the subject it just add something additional information regarding the activity of that certain subject and the second definition of that particular word adjunct is over there an adjunct is a phrase which isn't necessary to the structure of the clause it is meant to be that if you don't add this particular adjunct the meaning or the theme of that sentence remain to be understood as well but which add something extra meaning to it it is meant to be and you must have uh, two examples as well first of all they add to their fill in this particular sentence if you just say that they add it is meant to be that there is something complete to be understood and the word to their fill is an adjunct in that particular sentence dear fellows and then the second example on this slide is also over there we left at night we depart at night we left it is enough to be understood and at night is an additional information that when we left it is meant to be that in a sentence when something extra additional is told is informed by the subject this is called your adjunct dear fellows dear guys dear fellows dear guys in the previous slides there was a particular word clause and independent clause so here some of the examples are there first of all he did not learn the lesson so he stayed at home once again i would better try to define what is meant by an independent clause it is meant to be that a sentence even it is separated then it might stand on its alone it is meant to be in the first sentence he did not learn the lesson if we just write this sentence it it properly gives the whole sense so if we separate he stayed at home it is also works so and the second sentence on your slide is they bought the books and started learning their lesson if i just split these two sentences these two clauses then each clause stands its on its own they bought the books it is enough to understand and then they and started learning their lessons it can also stand on its own these two all the independent clauses and the next one is william likes to eat burger it is also meant to be your clause and the next one is do you know the man who died yesterday in the same clause is you may know do you know the man who died yesterday if you just split or separate these two clauses then they can stand on its own it is meant to be independent clause is meant to be if we separate the two clauses then they can stand on its own dear fellows dear guys dear guys dear fellows now i talk about the types of run on sentences first type of that particular sentence run on is fused sentence this type of run on sentence where two independent clauses are joined together 
without proper punctuation or conjunction in this particular slide there is a specific information that what might be a few sentence when there is a sentence to independent clauses and then you need not uh, to put or add punctuation or conjunction within that two independent clauses there you might also be have some sort of examples as well Dear guys, dear fellows, in the previous slide, I have talked about the first type of run-on sentences and there was the first type fused sentences. Here are the examples of that particular type named fused sentences. Here below are two independent clauses without punctuation or conjunction. The first example is over there on your slide is that the clouds were dark, we thought it would rain. Dear guys, dear fellows, in that particular sentence we don't have any punctuation mark or conjunction. And this is a, a clause and again I would define it if we split or break or separate the two clauses, the clouds were dark that it may stand on its alone and then the rest of the clause is we thought it would rain it also will stand alone and the second sentence example of few sentence is over there I bought a shirt however it did not fit again in that particular sentence we neither have a punctuation mark nor any conjunction so hope so dear fellows, dear guys, dear onlookers, you would have better understand what is a few sentence. Dear guys, dear fellows, it is the second type of run-on sentences and that is comma supplies or fault. What is meant by a comma supplies? A comma supplies or fault occurs when a comma incorrectly separates to independent clauses and the example is over there on this certain slide we went to the playground comma we remained unable to play as these are two independent clauses and they may stand on their alone so here it needs to be put conjunction rather than to put comma over there it is meant to be here the comma sign is incorrectly put as these two are independent clauses having subject and verb and can grammatically stand on their own as complete sentences by using the comma to separate the two clauses creates a comma supplies are fault and it may be correct if any conjunction is there and that might be but before we. So dear fellows, dear guys, hope so you would better understand what is meant by comma supplies are fault. Dear guys, dear fellows, dear onlookers, now it is the next type of run-on sentences and that is police sentence. What is meant by police sentence? It is a lottery device in which conjunctions are used in quick succession of one another. So it is one of the definitions here on your slide that it is a lottery device where conjunctions are used in a very quick manner, even one another. And the next definition of the certain slide is, it is a figure of speech and which coordinating conjunctions, words like and, or, but, etc that join other words or clauses in a sentence into connection of equal worth are used many times in close succession especially where conjunctions would normally not be present at all. It is meant to be in that particular type of sentences the biggest share of the words are of conjunctions. 
Dear fellows, dear guys, in the previous slides there was a particular word clause and independent clause. So here some of the examples are there. First of all, he did not learn the lesson, so he stayed at home. Once again, I would better try to define what is meant by an independent clause. It is meant to be that a sentence, even it is separated, then it might stand on its alone. It is meant to be in the first sentence, he did not learn the lesson. If we just write this sentence, it, it properly gives the whole sense. So if we separate, he stayed at home, it is also worked so. And the second sentence on your slide is, they bought the books and stuff. Dear guys, now there comes the slide of examples regarding police edition, where you would better see the repetition of coordinating conjunctions. First of all, in the first example, the sentence starts over there and we are going to Los Angeles and Colorado and Washington and Michigan and then we are going to Washington DC to take care of the visit of the White House. In the given phrase sentences there are some words repeatedly the word coordinating conjunction and has been used and that has also been prominated in red ink. And the next example of polysenditon is over there, the reputation of the word nor over there. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of light stays these couriers. Here in this sentence, the repetition of the word conjunction is your nor. Hope so you would better understand what I have tried to tell you. Dear fellows, dear guys, in the previous slide there was a word literary device, so I would better think to tell you what it meant to be. Literary device, it is a tool used by the writers to hint at larger themes, ideas and meaning in a story or piece of writing. And in the next coming slide, there would be some of the main literary devices used in English. Dear fellows, the caption on the slide, some of the main literary devices, there are much more devices and some of them are here on your slide, metaphor, family, personification, imaginary, hyperbole, irony and foreshadowing. Dear guys, dear fellows, you know, the caption on your slide is figurative language. What is meant by figurative language? is meant to be the use of words in such a way that they words from the standard sequence and meaning in order to convey a difficult mailing. Colorful writing clarity or suggestive comparison. It uses an ordinary sentence to refer to something without direct stating it. It is meant to be at uh, this particular slide links with the previous slide where figurative things, literary devices have been mentioned in the previous slide where uh, we are going to state some bravery of someone and then we refer it to the lion he is like a lion he is brave uh, like a lion so something like that that just links with the lottery devices it is meant to be figurative language Dear guys, dear fellows, in the previous slide there was the definition of figurative language and here in this particular slide you would better have an example of that. If someone says that a news hit me like a atom bomb, then what it is meant to be that is he really hit by an atom bomb? Certainly not. If uh, he is hit by an atom bomb, then there would not be even the crumbs of him over there. So it is meant to be that he is using figurative language. The listeners know that they would die if an atom bomb hit them. Dear guys, dear fellows, here an example of police and return. And this is the address that was delivered by Martha Luther King Jr., a blackish statesman. 
and this particular statement address is in the lesson of first year of English I have a dream I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted come over there every hill and mountain shall be made low come over there the rough places will be made plain come over there and the crooked places will be made straight come over there and the glory of Lord shall be revealed come over there and all flesh shall see it together in this particular slide there is the use of comma and it is a better depiction of police and what we have listened or read in the previous slide dear guys dear fellows there is one more type of run-on sentences and that is sentence definition sentence is a rhetorical term for a sentence style of which words phrases or clauses are joined by conjunction especially usually the conjunction is coordinated conjunction and that is and and the example is over there on this particular slide I crawled back under the cover of the boat and huddled there wet cold and sobbing and the word and over there that is just connecting the rest of the words in that particular sentence dear guys dear fellows dear onlookers the caption on your slide is a rhetorical term what is meant by a rhetorical term it can refer to the subject of rhetoric and what is meant by rhetoric the art of speaking or writing effectively what is the meaning of a rhetorical of a question asked in order to produce an effect or to make statement rather than to elicit information to call forth or draw out something such as information or a response information and it links to your lottery devices as well dear guys dear fellows it is the last slide of today very important topic and that is a run on sentences and the caption on your slide is a sentence what it is meant to be it is meant to be is the greek prefix or meaning lot involves omitting conjunctions totally and using a comma before the final item of a list it is meant to be that you just omit the conjunctions over there and put commas item list and example is also over there we packed sandwiches comma apples comma bananas comma cakes comma biscuits full stop that it is meant to be that it is a type where we you just use commas instead of any conjunction dear guys dear fellows thanks you very much for your very precious time that you listen all that very patiently and i think so that i have tried to share my maximum knowledge and also tried to deliver it whatever i have with me to say something in this particular slide and term a run on sentences so thanks to you all have a good night so take care and allah hafiz